At the time of me making this video, Shad PS4 is almost two years old, and many people have come to call it the Bloodborne Emulator. To be fair, Bloodborne was the most sought-after exclusive on the console, so I can understand why people would say that. But is it good for anything else? Are there any other AAA exclusives that actually run on the emulator? Hopefully this video will enlighten you on the progress being made so far, and as a bonus, I will also briefly explain how to install Shad PS4. So let's begin, shall we? You might be surprised to know that the PS4 didn't have many exclusives. Most of them did eventually get PC ports, but The Last Guardian is an underrated gem that has sort of become forgotten over time. It has a very unique story, albeit with some questionable gameplay decisions by the developers. I still would like to play it, but unfortunately there are some graphical issues that need to be ironed out first. For a two-year-old emulator, it's doing quite well though. I know Catherine was ported to Steam, but PC gamers never got the full body edition. It has quite a lot of extra content that makes it far superior when compared to the regular game. This was actually one of the few games that ran on Shad PS4 without any known problems. There were no performance hitches or graphical anomalies to speak of. Apart from no sound during regular gameplay and missing text from speech bubbles, Gravity Rush Remastered did run fairly well with occasional frame drops when new areas loaded in. I've heard that there is a fix for the missing graphics, although any attempts on my part failed miserably. It's a bit disappointing, but for me, it's not the end of the world. Tomb Raider for PS4 had different graphics when compared to the PC version. The game wasn't necessarily better on the console, but it definitely had a slight edge with its lighting system. With Shad PS4, however, there are some visual bugs, especially when looking at Lara's hair. Another issue are the controls. I couldn't run diagonally at all, which made traversal quite challenging. I sort of adjusted by turning with the right analog stick, but it's far from ideal. Having said that, I got quite far into the game, so it may be fully playable with some provisos. The games I already mentioned were my biggest successes, but for the most part, Shad PS4 is still only good enough for indie games. I tried all sorts like Minecraft, Grim Grimoire, Sonic Mania, and Terraria. They all worked fine, and yet nobody's really interested in seeing that in a video dedicated to PS4 emulation. Nevertheless, I also tried others like Alien Isolation, for example. It had a strange jitter, even when the game was at a solid frame rate. Dark Souls seemed fine until I fought the big enemy at the end of the first level. There were vertex explosions everywhere. Diablo 3 crashed right at this spot, and I don't know why. Resident Evil 5 was doing well until I met my first zombie. Then it all went pear-shaped. On top of that, Infamous Second Son looked promising, but I don't have a gyro controller, so I couldn't get far into it. Still, from what I've read on forums, it looks playable. If you're interested, feel free to try for yourself. I'm not done yet, because I tested all of these games as well, but unfortunately, I found no luck here. These games just wouldn't work, usually refusing to launch or crashing to desktop. It's early days for PS4 emulation, so I wasn't expecting a miracle. If you're interested, I'm now going to explain how to get Bloodborne working on Shad PS4. It's a bit cumbersome because you have to download two versions of the emulator. First, we'll go to this website and get the older release. If you're confused, just bear with me for now. Once your download is completed, create a folder on your PC and call it whatever you want. I'll just call mine Shad PS4 Installer. After that, I'll copy all of the downloaded files into this new folder and then I'll place this in my C drive. From there, I'll create a shortcut to my desktop. 
This will make things more convenient. To avoid any confusion, rename the desktop icon to signify its status as the installer. We will now run the software for the first time. Please note that you need to direct where to install the games and updates. Create these relevant folders inside the program and then point to where they are located. We are now done with this and can continue to the next step. We will now download the most current version of Shad PS4. Scroll down until you get to this spot right here. Then simply click Download. Just like with the previous step, we will now extract the files into another Shad PS4 folder. Everything will be the same, except this will be our main program. We will actually run the games with this version. Just watch what I do. When I direct to the relevant folders here, I'll make sure to point them to the same folders as in my installer version. This will help to automate the process when I install games. Let's go over the settings quickly. There's not much to change because the default settings are fine for the most part. However, I would advise you to turn on nightly updates this will keep your emulator up to date without much fuss. Under graphics, there's really not much to do, except maybe enabling HDR if your monitor has the ability. You can also raise the resolution, but I would actually recommend that you leave it alone. I have my reason. Just copy what I do, and input controls are set automatically, so there's no need to bother with control settings. The system module files aren't exactly firmware. Instead, they allow certain visuals to show for certain games when running on a PS4. So it's obvious that you'll need it for the emulator as well. I will add though that Bloodborne runs fine without them, but certainly other games will not. Distributing these files is illegal, but just know that the Internet Archive is your friend. Anyway, to install these files, simply follow my example. Now you'll find out why we had to download two versions of the emulator. Simply put, the newer versions no longer allow you to install PKG files. The developers were afraid of litigation. The process of installing Bloodborne is really simple though, so just watch what I do. Before starting Bloodborne for the first time, make sure to disable motion blur and chromatic aberration in the patch file. This will show how to do it. Do not raise the resolution with this, however, since it will crash your game. After finishing with the patch file, we will launch lossless scaling. With this, we can use FrameGen to double the frame rate and AI upscaling to raise the resolution. This is really the safest and most reliable way to do it. Just keep the software running in the background, and once Bloodborne launches, press Ctrl, Alt and S to activate lossless scaling. And this is what you'll see, a game that's effectively running with much sharper graphics and a frame rate locked to 60. I know the counter says it's only 30, but this is the true frame counter right here, and it says 60, so it works. Just one more thing. To avoid vertex explosions during gameplay, make sure to select Default Appearance during character creation. There is a mod that allows you to change the appearance without graphical errors, but it's more of a hassle than anything else. This method works and doesn't require that you scroll through endless forums.